Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Hippie's Chopper Corner. Uh, got some stuff done inside the shop. Don't really have room to bring. I've got room to bring that one back in, but what's the point? It's going to the swap meet, so it could just live right there, leaned up against the shop till we go to the swap meet. Anyway, uh, good little rotor, front end. I got brake set up for it. Comes with risers, handlebars, back wheel, you know, motor tank, a few other things. You got a bike. 150 bucks, hit me up. I don't have a title for it, so you'll need a titled engine to put in it to be legal. All right, got that refrigerator and freezer tucked over in the corner. Freed that wall over there up. Thank goodness I was able to move my toolboxes out, my oil chains and stuff. Got a place to park my welder and my, and my jack now. And uh, when I do get that iron head that I've got, I've got a 76 complete bike. It's going to be a winter project. It can live right here where that chair and that crate is. Um, but I wasn't going to bring that roller back in here for that. I don't have a kickstand for it. And both my jacks are being used right now. One of them's holding that bike over there up. And I got one under the pan head. I just feel better about having a jack on them when they're on the lip. <coughs> Swept the floor a little bit. <coughs> but I have the iron head here. So one, two, three, four, five. I've got room for six bikes right there. And then I'll have to have one on the lift. But, new addition. Finally got my air lift brought in. I bought that about a year and a half ago from my brother Big Sexy's widow. It just took me forever to go get it. But I finally got it. Got my other parts table moved over here. Got my toolbox moved to the middle, so I'm in a central location now. You know, work on a bike, toolbox, work on a bike, toolbox. This is just a much better uh, setup for me. The compressor's got a home, the trash can has a home. Nice little corner to tuck exhaust in over there. Now, when I get rid of all this damn swap meat stuff, because I'm getting rid of it. I'm gonna stack them deep and sell them cheap up there. We're getting rid of this stuff. I don't want to bring much of this home, if any. Uh, then I'll have room to, uh, I mean, if I bring any of this stuff back, I'll hang it on the wall. That, that's basically what's going to happen. It's going to become a wall art at that point. Uh, did a little bit of light sanding, knocked some of that rust off the tank yesterday. I didn't spend long doing it. Just, just monkeyed around a little bit to make sure it was just surface rust come off easy enough. And it did. <clears throat> Got a cool little grinder uh, set up. Mount your grinder in it, cut metal, because hell, I'm having to cut it just in that bra bra uh, vice over there. And his wife gave me a, a Harley Davidson service manual for 78 and a half and up uh, FLH FXE. Uh, so that was cool. I'll probably, this is Sunday evening. I had a pretty cool video started, it had a nice sunset. It was just beautiful out here at my place when the sun sets, but. Um, I hit the button on the top and it killed the video, so I had to start the video again. And maybe one day I'll start uh, using that GoPro a lot more. I've been using the GoPro to film anything I do on the pan head, um, but you know I'm working on that. So y'all are going to see it with me for the first time. I'm going to go over here. <clears throat> I've already pulled all the little bolts out of it. They're just little little Allen bolts and. Uh, I showed y'all what was going on uh, down here with the lifters. I found some metal sitting on top of that cork gasket, little pieces. I put them in a bag. I don't know what I did with the bag. Now I can't find the bag. May have to go the other way with it. I'm gonna set y'all down for a hot second. I don't know how much of this y'all are getting, but I'll bring the camera back as soon as I get the rocker box off. I don't know that I can get the rocker box off without pulling this tank. I keep hitting the damn pet cock over there. Head 
specialist, guys. But I feel like it should come up and wonder if I had to push rod to push rods in it. And I can compress those valves. culprit too and I'm subject to have a leak a forever leak right there I found it I need to check those push rods and make sure they're not damaged but I'm gonna say that's as far as I need to go all right see that push rod hole see that push rod hole where it's it's nicked it out right there I'm not super concerned with it and I don't think none of that got down in my lower. I think it got caught on that cork down at the bottom. And that's from that out of, that's from that out of adjusted lip, uh, push rod. Man, I'm glad to see that. I was so worried about what I was gonna find. Oh, thank goodness. I mean, nobody's usually happy about finding a little piece of their head chipped off, but damn, that's cool. I will put that rocker box back on, push those, put those tush rod, push rod, tush rod tubes, put those push rod tubes back in it. The guy behind the camera's an idiot. I'll put those push rods back in it, get them adjusted, and, uh, and get this bad boy fired up because the way it stands, hell, I've only got one chopper that's really running, and that's my uh, CB750. This one will fire up, but still ain't got it figured out. I'm thinking about taking that 73 motor out and putting in this one, because I know that's a runner. That's a good runner. Put that one in that one. Then I can ride both of these, ride the pan head and this shovel head some more this year before it starts to get shitty weather. Finish building that one during the winter, and then um, tag team that iron head. But... Uh, just, just a quick update, man. I knew a lot of you guys were wanting to see what was going on with the pan head. There it is. Here's what I've done with my shop. I think I've got it set up a lot better. I mean, this wall over here looks like hell, but all them parts will be gone. I'll have room for my press, my drill press. Um, I'm going to move all my steel outside. I've got some steel outside. I'm going to move it outside. Uh, move this table all the way down to the door. Um and just give me more room on that wall over there. Oh, I ain't even talked about this bike. Um, man, y'all gonna love this. It's a 2020, I think it's a 22. Let me see how many miles are on it. Uh, 5,000. No, maybe a 23. I don't know, anyway, it's a rope, no. It's a 22. The only reason it's got low miles on it, it stayed in the shop. He had, it's Roguelite ST 22. He has the S&S &S 127 kit on it. Um, upgraded his compensator. I think you put a Scorpion or a Barnett clutch in it. Uh, ton of money. This bike's really quick, man. He's probably 130 horsepower, probably 135 foot-pounds of torque where... My 122 is probably only 120 horsepower, maybe 130 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, so he can get down on me a little bit. He can dig on me out of the hole, and then he can pull on me there at the end, though, because we've done it. Uh, but anyway, this is Harley's new addition. Yeah, it's exhaustless. Ain't that pretty cool? You don't have to have a stupid exhaust pipe anymore, man. Harley really figured it out when they come out with that. They can't figure out how to keep these engines cooled down, you know. Uh, they, they they can't figure out how to do a completely water cooled engine for a, for a road glide or something, which I don't know. I'd want one of them anyway, but Harley engines get really hot. But hey, now that you ain't got an exhaust, man, you don't got anything to burn your leg anymore. Of course, all you guys know I'm kidding about that. He had a uh, mid pipe two into one that stopped about right right here, right behind the passenger peg. And man, with that big ass cam, 
and that 127 S&S in it. And he got a race only pipe, you know, not 50 state compliant. That thing was just so loud. It was obnoxious. It, it, it was good sound, but it was just really obnoxious to anybody that rode it. Uh, so he traded one of my brothers. It's got a longer uh, two into one, but he didn't bring the right bracket. So it's, uh, it's just sitting here on the lift right now. But anyway, I got to get. It's Sunday evening. I'm probably going to drop this tomorrow night, and then I'll film another one sometime this week when I get the pan head put back together. Uh, appreciate all you guys hanging it in to the end. <clears throat> appreciate all my subscribers. I'm, I'm past 900, moving toward 1,000. Uh, knocking my watch hours down. I need to do that. Thank you for everybody that subscribed. All you guys that's been with me for a long time. I don't even know who all's been with me for a long time. I want to call some of y'all out, but... Man, I wouldn't want. I don't want to offend you if I don't remember you. But Edzilla, Bender, Bender, Exit Chop Block, of course, my sponsor, Slickhead Custom Cycles, uh, Oscar down in Spring Hill, keeping it sketchy. Uh, all of y'all, y'all know who I'm talking to, man. Terry Massey, um, you guys that are always in my comments, I appreciate that. Uh, much love. You guys get a chance, go check out the Abyss Garage. That dude has a phenomenal series on how to take a stock shovel head and turn it into a bitchin' chopper, man. I don't know why his channel hadn't took off faster, uh, but I believe in what that guy's doing over there. So go check him out, The Abyss Garage. And of course, you keep up with what old Slick's doing up there in Jersey with Slick Head Custom Cycles, man, because he about to get that old flathead back on the road, man. He gonna do it. He knows what he's doing with it. So, all right, until next time, man. Y'all tune in for more of this sketchy chopper shit at Hippie's Chopper Corner. Home of sketchy chopper where we keep them sketchy all the time. Just look how beautiful it is out that window in God's country. Huh? Them deer gonna start moving real soon.